Today, we're talking about how to utilize the house hacking method for commercial real estate. And if you're new to this channel, I always leave a comment below with a table of contents if you'd like to skip around. And be sure to stick around to the end when I will give you my best tip for house hacking commercial real estate. While this method has been around for quite some time, house hacking rose to popularity as a real estate investing tool during the 2008 downturn. Investors looking to take advantage of better financing and better cash flow started seeking duplexes, triplexes, and quadplexes to purchase as owner-occupied investments. They would live in one unit and rent out to one or more tenants that would help cover the costs of owning the property. However, the house hacking method isn't just for residential property. Commercial real estate investors can utilize this strategy to start building their portfolio of investments while their tenants cover the costs. Here's how. First, what is house hacking? House hacking is a real estate investment strategy that involves renting out portions of your primary residence in order to generate income to help offset your costs, such as mortgage, operating expenses, etc., of owning the property. Now, when executed correctly, not only will it allow you to live in your property for free, you may also be able to generate positive cash flow from your investment. Not bad, right? This investment strategy allows you to squeeze every bit of value possible out of your property, which will benefit you financially. However, just like many any other real estate investing strategies, house hacking has its downsides too. If you found an outstanding deal on the price, the project may require a little more work on your part as the investor. Being one of the tenants in your own investment property can also be uncomfortable for some landlords. Those temporary discomforts are worth the benefits though, which we'll dive into here shortly. Now, here's how you can apply this method to commercial real estate. For most small business owners, your rent will be one of the largest liabilities on your balance sheet. And if your lease is triple net, not only will you be covering the landlord's mortgage payments, you'll also be paying to maintain the common area and covering the property taxes and building insurance. You might as well own the property. You're essentially paying all the expenses already anyway. Yes, you'll have to come out of pocket for a down payment on the property, but you will be building equity into a commercial real estate investment for yourself. So find yourself a building and some tenants. Also, it's worth noting that you don't have to own a business for this method to work. I've had clients use the same strategy with hotels and multifamily properties where they live on site and operate the investment. You can utilize the house hacking strategy strategy with almost any kind of commercial real estate, multifamily, office, retail, industrial, hospitality, and so much more depending on how creative you get. And if you'd like to learn more about the different types of commercial real estate, check out this video here. When you purchase a building using this method, I highly recommend that you treat yourself and your business as two different entities. Most of our investors, including myself, will purchase the property in one entity and lease the space back to their business. Doing so will relieve liability on your business and give you tax benefits, which we'll discuss later. Of course, you'll want to consult your CPA first. By house hacking a commercial property, you'll be able to free up cash flow for saving, investing, or paying off your mortgage that much faster. Here are a few different ways you'll free up your cash flow. One, lower monthly rent payments since tenants will be bearing the majority of your expenses. Two, lower taxable income since you'll have more tax write-offs. Three, positive cash flow from tenants' rent, which you can reinvest into more property. And if you outgrow the space, it'll always be there to provide you with rental income too. Then you can move on to the next building and repeat the process. Now, let's discuss why you should house hack commercial real estate. We've already covered how house hacking commercial real estate can significantly lower your costs. I touched on how you can start growing your investment portfolio as well. But there are many benefits to house hacking commercial real estate. Here are just a few. Better financing terms. If you choose to take the owner-occupied financing route, you'll find better terms from your lender. To qualify for owner-occupied financing on commercial properties, most banks will require you to occupy at least 51 percent of the space. However, I have seen some lenders accept as low as 30 percent depending on your relationship with them. With owner-occupied terms, you'll typically be able to benefit from a lower down payment somewhere in the 10 to 15 percent range and have a lower interest rate and longer amortization terms. Banks are often willing to offer better financing terms for owner-occupied commercial real estate since it's seen as a less risky move. Cash flow. Potential for cash flow from the investment is one of your primary benefits of house hacking commercial properties. Not only will your tenants cover your expenses involved in owning and operating the property, you may be able to benefit from extra capital after everything is paid. You can use this cash flow to offset your business's costs of renting the space, take that capital and reinvest it into other properties or 
Utilize it to pay down your loan faster. Landlording experience. Lenders love experience. And if you're looking to grow a portfolio of commercial real estate investments, you'll probably be working closely with lenders so that you can utilize leverage to purchase more properties. The investor's experience is an important part of a lender's risk profile when determining whether or not lending you money makes sense for them in their bank. No better way to gain that investment experience than on a property and project that you own and occupy. You'll be intimately involved in the day-to-day -day and will learn the ins and outs of leasing to potential tenants, managing the property, dealing with contractors, and producing financials. Not only will this experience make your investments more successful, but it will also allow you to take down larger projects with a lender's support. Tax benefits. Commercial real estate comes with many tax benefits. Not only will your business be able to write off its rent payments, as the landlord, you will also be able to write off interest payments, any expenses related to maintaining or upgrading the property and the structure, as well as depreciate the asset. Of course, you'll want to speak with your CPA before moving forward on any of these write-offs. And if you decide to sell the property, you'll be able to execute a 1031 exchange to defer any capital gains tax on the investment and place that capital into another project. Passive income. Your money works for you. If done correctly, owning commercial real estate can generate passive income. Whether you go to work tomorrow or take a vacation, those rent payments will keep coming through the door. That's mailbox money. Passive income is how you build true wealth through real estate and you can use this house hacking strategy on commercial properties to begin Begin building up that portfolio so that you don't have to work if you don't want to. Commercial real estate can be amazing for your retirement plan. Which do you like better? the passive income or the tax benefits? Let me know in the comments below. Let's cover the math behind commercial house hacking. So we've covered how this strategy can lower your expenses and help you build up your investment portfolio. Now, let's dive into an example of how your commercial house hack might work. Let's say you have an 8,000 square foot commercial space with a $1.2 million purchase price. Market rents are $20 per square foot triple net with $3 per square foot in annual operating expenses. Your winner is offered terms with 15 percent down, four and a half percent interest, and a 25-year amortization. To make things simple, let's say you decide to own or occupy 51% of the building so that you qualified for that 15% down payment. Your out-of-pocket expenses for this project will be $180,000. Your business will occupy 4,080 square feet while you list 3,920 square feet for rent at market rates of $20 per square foot triple net. As I mentioned earlier, you will want your business to pay market rents because of the tax implications. So your gross revenues as the property owner will be $160,000 per year in base rent, $24,000 per year in additional rent, those are your triple net pass-throughs, which gives you an annual total of $184,000. So now that you have your estimated gross revenue, let's look at your expenses. You will spend $24,000 per year on operating expenses, which is covered by your additional rent, $4,080 on utilities, which I estimated at $1 per square foot annually, and $68,028 on mortgage payments. That brings us to $95,948 in total expenses. Now, this is a very simplified version of investment underwriting. However, those numbers are close enough for the purposes of this example. In this scenario, you've profited over $88,000 on a property that you've commercially house hacked. With $180,000 down, that's a 49% cash on cash return. Not bad. However, some investors decide not to have their business pay them rent and instead opt to have the business just cover the remaining expenses on the property after they've collected rent from the tenants. If that's the case, the tenant will pay gross rents of $90,160, which is again that $20 per square foot plus $3 per square foot and pass through triple net expenses. Your business will be responsible for paying the difference of $5,788 on 4,080 square feet, which brings your effective rent to $1.42 per square foot. When you put numbers to paper, it's pretty easy to see how house hacking commercial property not only makes sense for you as an investor, but also for your business. Here are your financing options for commercial house hacking. When house hacking commercial real estate, you have a number of different finance options. First, conventional loans. Conventional commercial real estate loans are best if you have the cash to cover the down payment of around 20%. This type of loan will often have some of the lowest fees and fairly competitive rates. However, conventional loans are one of your less flexible loan options and usually require a 20% down payment and have shorter loan terms with fixed rate periods, often in the five to seven year range. SBA loans. SBA loans offer buyers a better option than conventional loans with respect to longer fixed rates and term lengths. 
This product will often be more flexible with lower rates than conventional loans. SBA loans often have higher fees, lower down payment requirements, usually 10% or so, and stricter prepayment penalties than your other options. And while they can be exhausting to qualify for since you have to jump through the SBA hoops, they do allow you to come out of pocket less on the front end. Hard money or private money loans. If you're working on a tight timeline or don't qualify for the other options above, a hard money or private money loan could be a strong option for you. These loans are sourced from the private market, meaning a lender other than a financial institution. These loans are typically short term with higher interest rates and approvals are based more off the property or project rather than the borrower. Hard money and private money loans are often referred to as bridge loans because investors will typically utilize them for the interim while negotiating a longer term conventional loan. Let's cover common objections and challenges with commercial house hacking. When I pitch this investment strategy to clients, there are almost always a few objections. In fact, I had some objections to it myself before I ended up doing it with the Cobble Group at one of my properties. Here are a few of the common objections and challenges and my responses that you may face when you're house hacking commercial real estate. I don't want to rent space next to my tenants. This objection is pretty reasonable. Most individuals are not comfortable having personal and business relationships mixed, which is often the case if you're on site with your tenants. One upside here though, is that you get to choose your tenants. Not only can you financially vet them to make sure that they will have the means to pay rent every month, but you can also check character references to ensure that a prospect is a tenant that you'd like on your property. Now, some may also see a tenant's ability to just knock on your door with maintenance issues or rent concerns as a problem, but I actually see that as being a positive. If you break down the barriers for tenants to report any issues with the building, they might not just ignore them. You may find you actually enjoy getting to know your neighbors too, and that it won't be an awkward situation. Won't I be responsible for maintaining my property? Well, yes and no. Yes, it will ultimately fall on you to maintain the quality of the property, which means any issues that arise in your tenant spaces, depending on how your lease is structured, will become your responsibility. Now, you could spend time building up a solid vendor list of plumbers, electricians, handymen, etc., which is a good route to take if you eventually want to quit your day job and run property full time. However, if you intend to continue to focus on your business, you should hire a property management company. This property management company will not only keep you at arm's length from your tenants when it comes to rent, they'll take the overwhelming majority of the day-to-day decision-making off your hands. And as I've said before, if the deal doesn't make sense when you add in management expenses, it probably doesn't make sense anyway. I can't find a good deal. Finding investment deals that work for you can be challenging, trust me. I know, especially in commercial real estate. In fact, it's not uncommon to look at a hundred different properties just to find one that would not only fit your investment criteria, but would also make a suitable home for your business. So put your commercial broker to work, get out there and hit the streets yourself. There are many different ways for you to go about finding a deal that suits your needs. And in truth, every real estate market is different. If you live in California, you may not be able to produce cash flow from your investment property, but chances are good you can still reduce your cost of living or operating your business rather. Get out there and turn over those stones. You'll find that gym eventually and it will be worth it. What if I have any issues with the tenants? Even if you vet your tenants correctly, there's always a chance that something could go wrong. They lose a major customer, business model changes, now they can't pay rent. These issues are why I appreciate having a property manager between me and the tenants on my properties. They will handle all of these issues without my involvement. Of course, it usually makes sense to work with a tenant to figure out how you can get through any situation together, but that isn't always the case. If you have to enforce some aspect of your lease or worse, evict the tenant, your property manager will take care of everything. Take advantage of those services and let them work on your property while you work on your business. Now, one final thought. If feasible, you should occupy the least desirable space. When house hacking commercial real estate, those least desirable spaces on the property will be among the most difficult to rent to potential tenants. So by occupying the least desirable space, you will make it much easier on yourself and your cash flow in the long run. Now you know how to house hack commercial real estate. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below and I'll be sure to get back with you. And if you're interested in more commercial real estate investing strategies, leasing tips, and market updates, smash that subscribe button.